to see you all. You too. <laughs> yeah. Yes, good morning indeed. Uh, you know, uh, later this week, my family is embarking on a rite of passage both joyfully anticipated and deeply dreaded. We are moving our daughter into her university dormitory and everything that that implies. It's going to be a tough week. <laughs> So our lesson today is in some form of a confession that I have been experiencing symptoms of old timers lament. <laughs> I've come to recognize I am riding through the second half of my life and the world of opportunity that once lay open at my feet has, through a litany of self-imposed cascading choices, begun to narrow its welcoming embrace. <laughs> and that, finally, brings us to the subject of values and how our beliefs affect them. Now, I am not an expert on coins, so I did a quick dance through Wikipedia to glean a few generalities to illustrate our discussion here this morning. So please, disclaimer, do not make your investment decisions based on any figures or facts that I might offer herein, okay? We're just here to talk about spirit. So what I found out is that the people who mint coins will offer up all manner of reasons for putting dates on the coin. But I suggest the bottom line is that the, the primary purpose is simply to increase their value. Imagine if there were no date and the de design remained static, a penny minted in 1804 and a penny minted in 2022 would represent the same value one cent. But now some fun facts. I was able to find the uh, current market value of an 1804 half penny coin, and that's roughly about $520. So if you bought a penny's worth in 1804, you'd be holding a thousand dollars in your hand or better. So the, but the purchasing power of that 1804 penny it's said to be just over 25 cents today. But when you consider what a penny would buy in 1804, I think it requires a lot more than a quarter to buy the same things today. It is obvious that 1804 penny, if undated, has lost most of its value. On the other hand, with a date stamped on, it gains historical significance, subjecting it to greatly inflated value on the collector's market. Simply stamping a date on that coin increased its purchasing power astronomically. You can get a lot with $1,000, even today. Almost a full tank of gas in some places. Our belief that something old and rare takes on some intrinsic value increases its purchasing power. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we heard Reverend Kent introduce the term levity regarding our spiritual nature. The term suggests rising beyond the confines of gravity, allowing our beliefs to rise beyond the appearances around us such as the value of the dated coin rises out of all proportion to its stated value. The discussion we hear so much today is around our COVID life and our post-COVID expectations. I suggest we expend so much energy trying to return to what was, what we have known, that we forget our entire purpose in living is to grow, evolve, and expand our experiences and consciousness. I watched an interview with a young man, clearly a third my age, at a gathering of political conservatives. 
where he expressed his idea of a perfect America would be a returning to the post-World War II era. Now he clearly did not live in the 1950s or early 60s. So his only vision of that time must be through someone else's eyes. Now, I too would love to go back to those years, not because they were the perfect America, but because I was a child then. The world of possibilities lay wide open at my feet. I had no responsibilities. My parents, aunts, uncles, and grandparents were alive and embracing me with love. I remember it fondly. But my experience is not everyone's experience at that time. We in my family were not rich by any standard, but we were allowed to become rich. No one was kneeling on our throat, denying us loans, or telling us we were not welcome. Too often we expend so much energy trying to make everyone else conform to our vision. We forget that they too have a vision. They too have memories and experiences. They too have a perspective, and we may not be any part of it. Holmes writes in the Science of Mind textbook, a true estimate of real values cannot be built on the shifting sands of time alone. In the long run, the merciful will obtain mercy. In the long run, we shall reap as we have sown. It is in our spiritual nature to grow and expand our thinking, to open our minds, to new ideas and weigh them against the nature of spirit. Are they expressions of love? Are they creative ideas? Do they contribute to the beauty of life? Are they expansive and inclusive? Or do they stifle progress? Draw a line in the sand saying this far and no further. Well, idle hands, hands that are not creating and expanding, these are the devil's tools. Remembering in science of mind, the devil too is just an idea. The belief in a power of evil, but just a self-imposed separation of self from spirit. Ernest Holmes writes again, but an idea has no real value until it becomes an experience. Our purpose is to build and improve our world. That is why we stamp dates on coins to mark where we started and move forward from there, growing our market value along the way. We embrace the ideas that align with spirit and Bring them into our human world of experience, expanding our common consciousness, redefining our common consciousness. We push the boundaries of the common consciousness, letting go of old ideas that we recognize are not in alignment with spiritual principles. We do not need to condemn the past to let it go but we do need to let it go when it no longer serves our spiritual needs. See, that's one of the caveats of the science of mind. We can let go of an idea without condemning it. Simply recognize, hey, we're barking up the wrong tree. Let's try another one. We don't bog ourselves down in judgment as fun as that may seem to be sometimes. We develop technologies that erase any excuse for subjugating our neighbors, any excuse for living in poverty or ignoring the root causes of misery and suffering. It was easy to distrust others when we did not know anything about them. They were a threat. They were going to take our stuff. 
But how does that hold up in a world where I can talk with anyone on the planet as easily as I can talk to someone in the same room? Holmes writes again, the whole teaching of Jesus is to have faith and to believe. He placed a greater value on faith and belief than any individual who has ever taught spiritual truth. We are to believe in ourselves because we have first penetrated the invisible cause back of the real self. We are to have absolute faith in our work because we have positive convictions of the inner power which enables us to do this work. He's speaking principally to practitioners there doing affirmative prayer work. However, it applies to all of us because we are all in reality practitioners when we understand how this universe works and apply the principle. Understanding how the universe works is key to having faith and believing in a power greater than us and using it to empower our lives and the lives of those around us. It is not God's will that we stand still and beg him, her, or it to be merciful upon us. It is for us to recognize that the spirit power is merciful upon us all the time and is simply awaiting our direction to create for us from our belief. We are created in the image of the power. We are its arms, legs, fingers, and because we are gifted with freedom of choice, sometimes we are that crazy uncle for whom spirit delivers without judgment. When we believe otherwise, believe the power exists outside of us, separate and aloof, we allow the mistaken idea of duality to creep in. We have lost faith and lose control over our experience. Lacking control, we do not recognize that we are still creating experiences from our own belief. We lose sight of our spiritual anchor point, reinforcing the mistaken idea of evil as real. Creating the slide down which we are drawn into the rabbit hole where reality and illusion become indiscernible. Ralph Waldo Emerson in Emerson's essays writes, they who make up the final verdict upon every book are not the partial and noisy reader of the hour when it appears, but a court as of angels, a public not to be bribed, not to be entreated and not to be overawed, decides upon every man's title to fame. Only those books that come down, which deserve to last, regardless of the hoopla on opening day, if it's real, if it's solid, if it's spiritually true, it will endure the test of time. In the human experience, the arc of justice, of spiritual awakening seems glacially slow. Our finite existence in this plane imposes a sense of urgency in us to see this thing completed, this journey to the spirit. Let me offer this truth. It ain't gonna happen, okay? Not in your lifetime, my lifetime, or the lifetime of my daughter whose adventures are just beginning. The human journey back to our spiritual roots is the reward we are seeking. We stamp the date on our coins as markers in time to remind us of how far we have come. We value those markers because they demonstrate the growth of our market value as we more clearly understand the truth we are seeking. The markers grow in value as they become more and more rare, symbolizing the spiritual evolution we are experiencing as each new generation recognizes 
and releases mistaken ideas and embraces its spiritual truth. This is not an easy journey. We see from the example of the young man I saw interviewed, there are those who simply don't yet get it. We are not all moving at the same pace. We are not all awakening together, but one at a time, one soul at a time, recognizing new ideas. And there is a lot of support for a community that clings to the old ideas because it was comfortable. because it released them from any responsibility and their experience was a good one. But they're forgetting theirs was not the only experience. Slowly, as a community, the common consciousness ever so gradually arcs toward justice and spiritual awakening. There will be spurts where it moves fast. I suspect the end of World War II was one of those periods when people recognize how horrible things can get. And there was a brief period where people worked together in ways they had never not done before. We've grown comfortable, maybe a little lazy. Hopefully it won't take something so tragic to spur us on again but at least we know that one by one each of us carries the message into the, our world into our sphere of influence each of us is if you will a missionary of how the universe really works and people notice people alter their behaviors based on what we demonstrate we are messengers of spirit. We cast the old coins aside as we release the innocence of our youth. We reluctantly say goodbye to that which was so that we can step into what is about to be unburdened by ideas that no longer hold up to spiritual scrutiny. Moses led his people into the desert for 40 years, so a new generation who never knew the experience of slavery could enter into paradise uncontaminated by those restricting beliefs. But even today's shiny new penny locked away in some forgotten trunk in a dusty attic or musty basement will one day be old and worthless on its face value while becoming priceless for its importance as a marker for how much farther we have traveled and that the diminishing field of choices before us may just mean we are closing in on our spiritual goal. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my Michael Milton. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Glenn. Wow. That is telling us. That's telling us. Mm. Wow. That's deep. And I'm sure there are some questions looming large in, in some of us who want to make a a suggestion or some give an insight or you know some kind of takeaway from this message wow what's your epiphany what's your yeah but mm -hmm. <laughs> good morning <clears throat> you know the 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 title of of your of your talk dating coins made me think about dating as in you know hooking up with someone and <laughs> spending money to to hook up with someone and so i was thinking about, you know, they, they are all kinds of coins now to do all kinds of things. And so I'm thinking when you started, when I saw that title, that this was about using coins to 
do something. <laughs> but as 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 you made it clear, it the point of dating things, putting putting a, a mark on when you begin a process to show and have a, a place in a way of measuring how far you've come is what came through to me and the importance of doing that. And you use the coins, but you know, I'm working with some young people now and I encourage them. I say everything, every time you write, you write on a piece of paper, put the date on it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is to show when you started something and you can see the difference between then and now. And so, you know, as you as you continue to talk, it became more clear the importance and and I I do come to church and I this this is church. I do come to church to get confirmed, informed, affirmed. And you and and sometimes I go to be entertained, but I don't generally go to be entertained. In certain places, that's all they can offer is entertainment. But in this instance, this was confirmation, the importance of, of marking when you begin a process so that you can know and, and have some appreciation for the accomplishment of by the time you finish or get to it another point. And so that was good. And I, and I wanted to thank you. I'd, I opened all of that. As you were talking, I was thinking, that's what I was thinking, how, yep, that's right. Thank you. You said, you, you gave you gave the confirmation that that's a that's a a useful a useful habit of being able to make sure you know when you started something and when you finished and a way of measuring so that you can so that one so that I can develop appreciation for the effort and the perseverance of starting and finishing. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. I certainly got that too. And I, I have this great awe for Reverend Glenn. Uh, where does he get his title? He's so artistic. I mean, I can't even, one day I'm gonna find out though, <laughs> how, he, how he really, you know, titles is, is up. Um. I wanted to come right after because in reference to what she said, for me, this is a new beginning. Just starting to date because I never did all of that, you know, the dates and all of that. So it's, it's just start dating again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mar Marzia, uh, okay. first... Uh, I'll, get, I'll tell you, one of, one of the secrets of titles is the lesson I learned very early on from one of my teachers is never let a title get in the way of a good talk. Right. Okay. It doesn't, doesn't matter what you call it. <laughs> and uh, the other part of it was as this talk was developing, I, I was in a bit of a quandary because I was originally going to kind of talk more about treatment, affirmative prayer, that sort of thing. And that'll, that'll evolve into another talk one day. And because in treatment, we don't run a clock on that. You know, it's like people will say, well, I've been treating for this and treating for it and nothing's happening. And, you know, we, we come back with, well, then treat to get more clarity because obviously something is blocking the flow. And don't worry about how long you've been doing it. However, you know what? I can walk and chew gum at the same time. So I think there are, there are just areas of where things overlap. Treatment doesn't run a clock, but some other things do. And mm -hmm. uh, I had to remind somebody the other day that we give on to Caesar that which is Caesar and not on to God but that which is God. So uh, I think we can live in both worlds simultaneously. Yes, we can. Saw her, my sister, and and, and the rest of us, um, brothers and sisters, we generally have a meeting. It's, it's kind of a mini reunion on Zoom, and I'm thanking I'm thanking Yahweh for Zoom and and the way we're using it now. Zoom and Polycom and all those Google um, one on one have been uh, FaceTime has been around for a while, but it has evolved to another level. And so we have this meeting 
and the 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 the, 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 the argument is from my brothers is that they want to go back to the time when their grandmother was a girl and where she used to do stuff. And I'm really telling one on ourselves because of this, um, the trend of this, this story today. Yes, I used to be there as we used to spend holidays there. We used to see our, our grandma put, uh, because they didn't have refrigerators. She used to, to cure her meat over the flames, over the smoke, and that it would last forever and ever. And they think that there's something wrong with the world because we don't have those days anymore. And so my, my sister and I were, were trying to let them see that, listen, we're not going back to the days when, when you want to deliver a letter from one end of the country to the next and you have to ride eight days on a horse to get that one letter to that person. We said, it ain't happening. I remember when, when we had our pound, shilling, and pence that we inherited from Britain, and then we changed to dollars and cents, and the older people would never let go. That whole generation had to die out before we stopped hearing about pound, shilling, and pence. We are never, ever going back. Spirit has us moving forward, expanding, broadening, heightening. I mean... There's this allegory in the in the in the Bible about Lot's wife looking back. Yeah, she looked back and she was frozen. You ain't going nowhere looking back. So if we are not accepting that this world is continually evolving and expanding, then we're gonna be just frozen. Turn a pillar of salt like Lot's wife. I I in I I'm just thinking about what you were talking about, not going back. You know, we now use the term, quote, technology, and we think about the computer, we think about, you know, the, the iPads and all of those things. But technology merely means a way of doing something, a technique. It's, it's, it's from te technique. techniques. And so we're, we're now using, we've, we've now expanded the, ex the, the understanding or the meaning of technology, and it's and it's the same thing as 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 uh, dating. Yes. Technology technology has taken on a whole type of of of, mm -hmm. of image unto mm -hmm. itself. Where the young people now only think of tech when they think technology, they think iPhone or iPad or yes, so, or or one of the one of the the, the platforms, but. Technology mean merely means to continue to grow. To continue you know? to grow. Yeah. Thank you. Techniques. Beautiful. Technology yes. comes from techniques, right. a way of doing things. Right. And we have just expanded the many the way to do many things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because remember yes. the old fashioned can opener. Yeah. And, and the te <laughs> and the technology now that technology of the old fashioned can is just brrr, yeah, now, the electric now you ones now. Has a thing that. Mm -hmm put some electricity yeah. to it to that yeah, technique. Look, look at how we cook now in microwaves right in 10 minutes and dinner is ready <laughs> to spend 10 hours over something yeah we, 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 we're never so, you know, the, the roman empire was great because they learned how to build good roads and they yes. learned how to move water from one location to another yes no one had done that before as effectively as they did now they've come and gone since then, but they certainly opened the door for the rest of us. And everything we have today is building on that. I mean, you know, my, my secret fantasy is to be able to come back in a hundred years and see how obsolete everything I see today as being so modern is, you know? I mean, when I when I was a kid, we had a phone that we had to have a phone. You know? And and then, then my sister got a phone in her new apartment that had push buttons on it. That had buttons on it that we didn't even know what those buttons were going to be used for yet. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. now we have phones that are literally more powerful than the computers that sent people to the moon. Exactly. And, and on, I wear it on my wrist here. You know, it's yes, like, therefore, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dick Tracy, remember that was a Dick Tracy exactly. thing. <laughs> yes. Dick um, Tracy had no idea. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look at all those, um, what do you call, sci-fi movies. Yeah. I mean, 
It's right here. Beam me up, Scotty. Right here. I, I looked yeah. at some of the, uh, what was it? Oh, I was looking at something uh, about the man from UNCLE. Some of you remember that TV series. Mm -hmm. And they had some pretty advanced uh, sci-fi stuff for their spyware. And I was looking at it and I'm going, not only does that weapon exist now, it's one third the size of what they're showing. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even the phones, are, yeah, yeah. You know, wrist size now. Yeah. Oh Lord, I remember how, how I used to push back on the on the new the the, the um, smartphones because mm -hmm. I was so accustomed to my flip phone and I could just you know dial. That was the same way. <laughs> it took me over a year. I had to beg my son. I said, "Help me with this because I'm not having it." You know, um, <laughs> there, I, I gotta be honest here. There are uh, sometimes I look back and I think some things were better then than it is now <laughs> in terms like communication. You know, the technology sometimes on the phone you're in the same house and you're getting texting. You you don't get to spend time. I remember we used to grow, make things, be more skillful. We would make kites, we would make things with our hands. Now it's just, yeah, I think sometimes this technology may, make me lazy. I speak for myself. And not everything I agree with for things. There were really some things that are bad then, you know, you just wish it was today. So that's, mm. that's the, um, that's, the <laughs> that's the opposing side. <laughs> Okay. Well, there's, there's nothing wrong with celebrating the, the good things from our past and remembering the good things from our past and bringing some of those good things to our future. I mean, a lot of people like to go camping, but they prefer a, a quick assembly fold-up tent than to uh, a big heavy canvas thing with wooden poles that they have to carry around. Mm -hmm. But, and, you know. and an electric and an electric plug to, pu to pump up the air mattress. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Gotta have that. <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure. Oh boy, uh, I remember when I I used to go go outside and and climb trees and run around and and play ball and but these these children are not doing that nowadays. They're just they're on their phones. However, they must find another way of being active. <clears throat> it doesn't have to look the same as when I was a child, but yeah, they they find other they'll, ways to be active. They'll, they'll figure it out. They certainly will figure it out. Thank you so very much, everyone, for your commentary. Beautiful, beautiful. Um.